Hey guys, what's happening? Hope you're having a great day. Thanks for tuning in and watching. And thanks for watching my last video, which was announcing Aurora HDR 2019. Uh, a lot of comments on that, which I appreciate it. And, uh, you know, lots of views, which is obviously nice because I love for people to watch my stuff. I've spent all this time making it. Um, so uh, I want to talk about Aurora HDR 2019 again. Um, it's still on pre-order, as you know. I'll put a link down below. Um, it's a great product. I'm having a lot of fun with it. Um, a lot of the comments about my last video were, "Hey Jim, you seem a little excited," uh, and I was. I get pretty enthusiastic about uh, you know about these things. Um, it's fun for me to make videos, and I just I love um, photography, of course, and all the stuff uh, associated with it. And frankly, when you get new toys, it's like Christmas, so I get kind of fired up. Um, anyway, I'll try to be a little calmer today, not so hyper, um, but no promises. Anyway, um, I thought I'd walk through workflow and just give a tour of the product and talk about what I do to an image. So let me uh, just go ahead and jump into that. Um, so here we have a three exposure bracket set. I took one sunrise morning in Dublin, Ireland. So there's uh, exposure one, exposure two, exposure three. As you can see, there's movement uh, between them because I was shooting this handheld, but I was able to uh, craft that in Aurora and turn it into that. Um, so I cropped it and, and I'll walk through the workflow here, but basically I made a massive difference in the photo in really just a couple of minutes. It was simple and easy. So let me go ahead and jump into that and we'll, uh, we'll talk about it. Okay, so I'm back to my base HDR. So there's the uh, middle exposure from the bracket set and that's my base HDR. So one of the big things about the new version is the Quantum HDR engine. It's an entirely new algorithm. Uh, and tone mapping engine that's building these uh, base HDRs that look like that, which to me is almost exactly what the scene looked like. So the results to me are very natural. There's not a lot of noise, there's no halos. Um, a lot of the problems, problems, um, that you know you may have experienced in uh, creating HDR photos in the past is, are, you know, aren't really problems uh, any longer. I find this quantum HDR engine is creating these beautiful uh, base images. Now, I think a base image always needs editing, and uh, hey, I like to do it anyway, so I'm gonna walk through that. Um, but one thing I will notice that I wanted to talk about is that I find these base images in the new version are a little bit brighter uh, than they were in the, in the Aurora HDR 2018. So coming out a little bit brighter doesn't bother me. I actually like a bright, uh, not bright, but evenly lit uh, image to start, uh, and then I tend to add back in some shadow and contrast because I want to add some mood and some interest to the photo. I love HDR, but like when they're fully perfectly lit like that, to me it's kind of boring. Um, so I always add things back in, and I'll do that in this photo. Um, but I just wanted to talk about the Quantum HDR engine. That's kind of the big thing. Um, and it's AI powered, so what it feels like it's doing, and I don't really know for sure um, how this works. I'm not a software engineer, but it feels like it's taking sort of the best parts of each photo as it blends them, and accentuating those. And so, um, you know, I'm brightening up the dark parts. I'm, you know, maintaining the light levels in some of the brighter parts or maybe even toning them down. And I'm keeping the colors nice and balanced as well. So I'm going from like a center exposure like that to a blended HDR like that. Um, and uh, let's see, the other thing now, um, I cropped this. So let me go show you the crop tool. There, I took out a little bit on the right-hand side because I didn't care about that. And this was shot with a, a number of years ago. I had a micro four-thirds camera, an Olympus, um, and I, it's a four-third aspect or a four-to-three aspect ratio. I cropped it to three to two, so that's kind of what that crops about. Plus, I straightened the photo because it was crooked. So um, I wanted to share that with you. So uh, you know, oh, that's not where it went. Uh, I went, also went over here to lens correction. Um, I had some barrel distortion, and so you can see that barrel distortion and now straighter lines, right? So I'm liking what I got so far. Okay, basic panel. Um, I went ahead and did that. As you can see, I added a little contrast, a slight temperature and tint difference, and a little smart tone and took down the highlights. Um, it's called HDR Basic, but honestly, it's really powerful. It's a bit of a misnomer, I think. So it went from that to that. I didn't make a ton of changes here, but the power is in HDR Basic to actually do a lot. So just wanted to talk about that. Um, a color was next, and you know I'm all about my colors. Um, here I didn't even touch saturation, but I bumped up vibrance and color contrast. And if you look at the before, that's before the color filter, and after, I mean it's starting to come to life, I think. And color does that for me. I'm, I'm obviously a big proponent of using color uh, and accentuating colors, but I'll often leave vibrant, uh, excuse me, leave saturation alone and just take the vibrance and bump that up. It'll really bump up the intensity of the non-primary colors, where saturation just kind of hits everything. 
So that's what I did there. Um, HDR Enhanced, this is a new filter, or you know, it's, it's a renamed filter perhaps is a better way of saying it, but it's got this HDR Smart Structure, and I talked about that in the last video. But basically, as the name implies, it, it feels like it's taking AI and saying, all right, where do you wanna apply structure, Jim? And if Jim was just sitting here applying structure with a brush, I'd put it in the buildings in the street, and I wouldn't put it in the sky. Now, um, it does a pretty good job of that. It's not perfect. Uh, I don't know if you can tell in the video, but it's added a little bit of detail into the sky, which I don't want. I like my skies to be really smooth, so I'm gonna go denoise that. But the point is, uh, with the Quantum HDR engine and Smart Structure, it's, it's do I think, doing a really good job of not adding noise and artifacts and messy stuff. Um, in an overly uh, you know heavy-handed sort of manner, so it's working great for me. Um, there's the before and the after, just bringing up a little bit of those details. Uh, there's LUT mapping now. Now I didn't use any LUTs on this photo, but you can just click on here, say choose LUT, and you can come over here and say, well, what do I want to use? And you just kind of hover over it, and you can see what it looks like. I think that glorious actually looks pretty good, a little too blue, but you know you could choose that. You can adjust the opacity of it. Um, and then you could also use something like color toning, which is another filter, also known as split toning, to readjust some of those colors if you thought it was too blue. I'm not gonna use any LUTs here, so I'm gonna get out of that filter. There we go, uh, and that's off. So um, image radiance, polarizing, details, glow. These are you know same filters you had last time. Adjustable gradient is a new one. Um, so this used to be top and bottom tuning, but it's now had highlights and shadows added and you can see I mean immediately a massive difference in the photo before and after so on the top I took the exposure down uh, and decreased highlights increased shadows and on the bottom I just bumped up the contrast and uh, the shadows a little bit and so for me it's about balancing the light and that's what adjustable gradient helps you do so well like that before and after in fact on a recent luminar video I did that was one of my favorite filters in luminar and now it's basically the same, you know, or very close here in um, Aurora. So I'm quite happy about that. Um, HSL is next. Let me turn that on. I basically had to tone down a little bit of the red, a little too saturated, and the purple was getting a little high as well. So um, there's before and there's after, just a minor color adjustment. Uh, and then I went into color toning, and this is also known as split toning. And as you can see here, um, all I did is I, add, I added some color into the sky and a little bit into the street areas as well. So uh, what's color toning? It's, it's really called split toning. I'm not sure why it's called color toning in Aurora, but it is. But um, it does tone color, so I guess that's fine. Uh, anyway, um, the, uh, it's called split toning like in Lightroom and Luminar. That's why I always keep calling it that. Um, anyway, it divides highlights and shadows. You pick a color and an amount, which is the saturation slider, and you adjust accordingly. I added more warmth to the sky, basically, which is the highlights and the reflection of the sky on that street. Um, and then I add a little bit of cooler temperature into the, uh, uh, the streets and the buildings. So before and after. Just helps me pop that sunrise a little bit. Uh, and then I came over here and added a vignette. Um, and that's pretty simple, straightforward, and uh, something I, I tend to do a lot. So that's really all I did to the photo. Um, and then I went and added a new layer, which was just denoise, which I just painted into the sky. Uh, so I just, I'll show you my mask. It looks like that, right? A little bit sloppy. I was kind of do it, doing it in a hurry just to uh, get it done for the video. But the point was, um, I did have a little bit of noise in the sky, and I was able to take that out super quick with denoise. Now here's something new about Aurora HDR 2019 I wanted to share, and that is that you have all your Photoshop plugins as well. You didn't have that before, so you can just click on the plugins menu. You can come over here, and all of your Photoshop plugins are now available to you. So I've got Photo Lemur. I have the Nick collection, so Analog Effects, Color Effects Pro, Silver Effects Pro. Um, I've got the Topaz collection, so Impression if I want to make a painting uh, or Simplify if I want to make it, you know, kind of cartoonish or you know, remove a lot of the detail. Uh, texture effects, if I want to apply a texture. Um, let's just say I want to make it uh, black and white, and maybe I've got a preset I love in Silver Effects Pro. So you just click on that, it'll take your photo and zip it over to Silver Effects Pro, and then it'll open up that menu here in a moment, uh, like that. Um, and you know, you can move it around and, and full screen it if you want to, but let's say you got a preset you really love, and let's say it's uh, this one here. I'm just gonna pick that randomly. You just hit OK after you've selected it, and they're still called presets there, so I'm really gonna get confused. Um, but um, you just go ahead and you can drop that um, 
preset on the uh, on the photo and then Silver Effects Pro will drop it back in. And now it sets it up as its own layer. So this basically works the same way Luminar works now. You have uh, the ability to drop in or use plugins uh, of other products from Aurora and then just it'll drop it back in as a new layer and it names it based on the uh, whatever the plugin is called. Uh, the cool thing is you can just take the uh, opacity and say well it's 100% but maybe I want to reduce that and get kind of a blended look you know so like a desaturated uh, and there you go so it's now blending 55% uh, opacity so you can kind of see through part of it and get some of that color to come through but not all so it's just a, a different way to make different looks I'm gonna go ahead and delete it because I'm not interested um, so that's my photo and the other thing I wanted to share with you was the new looks that they have right so um, looks uh, used to be called presets now they're called looks and there's a number of categories so there's this essential uh, and I've already got all my edits on it so if I click on these they'll get even more intense but I'm gonna do it anyway but you have this natural that actually looks pretty nice I kind of like that uh, oh you know what that's doing that's laying on top of my noise reduction so let me fix that um, I'm gonna leave uh, let's see here I know I'll hit reset all and then I'll just go apply noise back and smooth it out because if you notice my mask is still there right let me show you my brush and my mask right my mask is still there I didn't change the mask when you add a preset to a layer it, it overwrites whatever's on your layer so I just overwrote my adjustments of that one filter but I don't want to do that so I went and added them back so now I'd add a new adjustment layer now let's go experiment with these looks which I'm gonna call presets accidentally um, anyway you can just click through this is the essential category and it'll just stick that look onto your photo uh, same way as it works before uh, there's some landscape looks right this warm landscapes really pretty now the colors are getting crazy because I've already made color adjustments but you know remember you can stack presets on top of uh, presets and just make adjustments and then you can you know adjust the opacity if you want to you got all kinds of options um, and then you know let's see there's a few other categories architecture uh, things like that dramatic artistic uh, and then you got other presets Randy has some uh, Serge has some nice ones as well he's got some nice you know he's big into color and and that sort of thing it seems and so you can just stick that on there and again adjust the opacity which you can do right there in that look window I was almost called it a preset window and then Trey has some as well so all of these come with it I'm not going to choose any of those in fact I'm going to erase that layer so I'm going to go back to my edits and leave them the way that they were but that's a uh, I was going to say quick tour I don't know how quick it was that's how Aurora HDR 2019 works that's some of the new fe features including a a preview of some of the looks um, we talked about the LUT mapping tool we talked about HDR enhanced with the new smart structure filter talked about the quantum HDR engine talked about the adjustable gradient uh, and there's a lot of other things we probably talked about as well um, not to mention the fact that we went from that to that so here's the slider you can see the impact of the barrel distortion reduction and of course all the color and uh, detail and tone edits that I made to enhance a photo and that's it my friends that's a tour of the photo uh, link below if you have any questions or excuse me comment below if you have any questions and the link down below will take you to the Aurora site if you want to get a copy of this it's on pre-order now until October 4th and then it goes live so you'll be getting it real soon Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, let me know, and I'll talk to you soon. Have a great day. Take care. Adios.